You have two hours to prepare and one hour to serve a beautiful buffet-style meal to some of the world's most amazing performers. The cast and crew will try both your meals, and then they will cast their vote for the one they like the best. One, two, three, yay! Along with their chicken and fish dishes, the blue team's healthy menu includes vegetarian curry, couscous, and green beans with mixed peppers. This meal is an absolute winner. Athletes want something that's going to be light and not weigh them down for their next show. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Meanwhile, the red team settles on an international menu of Asian cod, Mexican chicken, falafel, orzo pasta salad, and cauliflower soup. It's cauliflower and bacon. Is there a better combination? I don't think so. Uh, Andrew. How are you? Oh, Russian chef. So I'll give you a little bit of advice because I'm just watching what's happening yes. here. There's no question you're a great cook, right? Thank you. I think if you continue at this pace, you're yeah. going to crash and burn here. Okay. Lead your team. Give them clear direction. Okay. So you're making soup. Yes. How are you going to serve soup without a bowl? And I look around. Oh, my god. Guys, do we know where we're putting the soup in? My mind is just, like, defeated. What can we make from cauliflower soup? I happen to remember seeing a bag of cornmeal. And my mind goes, polenta. We're doing creamy cauliflower polenta now. Problem instantly solved. Once this starts getting thick, we're going to turn it down, OK? This is how I want the brochettes, people! I'm nervous about Lynn's leadership. She has a military background. She can be dictatorial. Please don't cross-contaminate the proteins with the vegetables. OK, Jen, move it. I'm going as fast as I possibly can. Use the mandolin. I can't work this damn thing. I was faster just using a freaking knife. Go back. Go back. Turn out. Push it in. All I hear in my head right now, use the mandolin! Use the mandolin! Everybody by now should know how to use a mandolin. I know. Hey, service. More chopping and less talking, okay, please? Do you want to do it yourself? Pardon me? It's cold as hell out. We're having a lot of trouble getting some good heat on these grills. Then the chicken sticks to it. The chicken's going to be underdone. I want these really hot, okay? John is a grill master. I picked John for this reason. All I could find was this tin foil and two hotel pans. So stack the hotel pans up, wrap the tin foil around it, and boom, you got an oven. This is smart. Yeah. It's keeping all the heat inside. That is Big John's idea. We should be smoking. Lynn, I need your help. OK, but now they're doing good? No, they're not. If, if they wouldn't stop dropping in temperature, I'd be really, really good. This is worse. Put them in a pan and put them in the oven. OK, there's no more screwing around. Like, really? Voices are getting high. I told you guys to get this off the grill and put it on the fryers a while ago. The morale in the kitchen is getting tense. These things are rough. Okay, I'll keep cooking it. You go, 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 do your stuff. I'm going to need the oven for my fish, eh? Going to have to share. There's like a bunch of wasps. They're in my chicken. They're in my sauce. I just start going at them with a towel. The parsley has to be chopped. It doesn't go in the mirror. It actually goes. I got the butter. You know what would be an amazing combination? What do you think, Chef? A little Reggiano, some cheddar, perhaps? I've got my cheese on standby right over here, Chef. Good luck. Can I take a quick look? You happy with the way it's turned out? Because the key with cod, you want to keep it nice and moist, right? Yes. I think it's light, it's fresh. The sauce is very good. That moisture there will help keep it, the fish nice and moist, that's for sure. So we need to start bringing the thing. Guys, don't forget, I need serving spoons. OK, let's go, move it. This is the extra fish. Check if we have anything. Just grab cilantro or something for garnish. Why are the stems even in here? That's yeah. for the falafel. Don't let this thing go down. Yeah. Not at the end. OK, we need a taste on this, brother. Yeah, let's put it. Red team, let's go! The cast and crew will sample the red team's international buffet of Mexican chicken, Asian cod, orzo pasta salad, vegetarian falafel, and cauliflower polenta. So we've uh, tried to keep the calories down in the polenta as much as possible so you can still reach those uh, death-defying heights later tonight. They will also try the blue team's healthy menu of chicken brochettes, citrus cod, vegetarian curry, couscous, and green beans with mixed peppers. Blue's the best! Oh, no. 
Salut. Bon appétit. Which one's better, this one or this one? The blue. I prefer the red because it's more risky, more fun. I hope you enjoy. I really like blue plate, very healthy food. How about you? I really love the cut and the pollen top wow. from the red meat. The chicken on the red is a little dry. The chicken on the blue plate, I really like the texture of it. I'll take the blue one. And couscous is perfect made, and the beans, it's great here. That speaks volumes, doesn't it? Yeah. An empty plate? Absolutely. The blue team I just found was really bland. Like, there wasn't <laughs> much to it. The reds, the sides are amazing. The polenta is really good, and so is the orzo. Red team! Cooking for Silk du Soleil, like, what a privilege. Good job! We did it! My team is the strongest team. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Diners, please cast your vote by taking one of the red or blue juggling balls from your table and dropping it into this gramophone. It could go either way. It just really depends on how they liked it. The winning team is... I can't watch, I can't watch, I can't watch. My heart beating out of my chest. Open the damn envelope. The red team! Yeah! I feel elated. So much pride. I can be a leader. Nice job. Nice job, Andrew. I think a big reason that we won today was because of my creamy bacon and cauliflower polenta. They really ought to put that in a cookbook. This humble potato is the main ingredient in another uniquely Canadian invention. Poutine. Yeah, baby. I feel really confident because we're making poutine. And as a Montrealer, poutine is Quebecois number one three o'clock in the morning food. As you know, poutine is a sinfully delicious combination of golden french fries, gooey cheese curds, and perfectly seasoned gravy. Right now, poutine is taking the world by storm and can be found on the menus of some of the world's top eateries, where chefs are elevating it to decadent new levels. And as you might have guessed, we want you to do the same. In just one hour, this lawn is going to be teeming with hundreds of hungry students. It will be each team's job to woo them with your own unique takes on a classic poutine, one that looks and tastes worthy of MasterChef Canada. Each team now has just 60 minutes to plan and prep elevated poutine dishes. Load me up, load me up, load me up. Before their stands open for business. Right away, I'm thinking, how delicious would our butter chicken poutine be? Oh, that sounds awesome. I do worry a little bit because, frankly, butter chicken on fries just doesn't sound most appealing to me. I was thinking if we did, like, a blackened Cajun chicken, something sweet with a little bit of heat, too, mm -hmm. and then call it, like, dirty chicks on top. <laughs> No. Having Jennifer on our team concerns me a little. She talks and talks and talks. For fries, though, if we toss them in cornstarch, hey, it'll make them crispy. No. Why don't we go Japanese, like, you know, Japatine, you know what I mean? With the nori, kind of like a ramen base, like Absolutely. a ramen gravy. My poutine is a definite West Coast thing. We have a lot of Japanese influence when it comes down to food. So as soon as I seen those ingredients there, I knew I wanted to represent the West Coast. Sexy, man. Yeah. Potatoes. I'm going to need a man on potatoes. That's me. Got John's it. our beef Got man, it. right? Yeah. I'm thinking Philly cheesesteaks okay. yeah. with some twerk. So I'm making El Gros Beef, which is a loose translation to the big beef. Poutine being the sinfully dirty thing that it is should have an equally dirty name. Sabrina is French Canadian. She's going to be the queen of poutine. And I think the blue team have a really good shot at winning this. Oh! 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 <laughs> Sabrina. What's up, chef? I've come to get an update on your poutine dish. Our gravy's coming together, our potatoes are on fire, and we're gonna have some deep-fried jalapeno. Ooh, woo! You cut plank steak before? Yeah. You know how to do it? Perpendicular to the grain, yeah. Otherwise? It's tough, Exactly, yeah. and what color are you expecting on that beef? It's gonna be a little pink inside, not too much as a college kid, we don't wanna go too rare with it. Sounds like you got it all together. David! Yes, yeah, chef. What are you gonna do? A Japanese-inspired bacon poutine. What are you gonna call it? Bacon japatine. So what's in it? The, of course, the bacon, a uh, pork stock, a sriracha of spicy mayo, nori, and a scallion. Well, look at him go, Hello, hey? Chef. Look at him go. You're fast, aren't you? Thank you, chef. 
You didn't take the peels off. No, I like it rustic. Okay. So you got the bacon here, and I mean, you know, bacon goes lovely with everything. And it's going to impart uh, bacon fat flavor with the fries as well. I think that's a fantastic idea. Getting a lot of that bacon fat into the fries, the potato's going to absorb it and give it extra, extra flavor. I wouldn't have picked pork, but in the sound of what you're doing, I couldn't wait to taste this. Thank you, Chef. How's everyone doing here? Excellent. How are you, right. Chef? Good. What are you making? We're making butter chicken poutine with a mango yogurt cilantro coleslaw to put on top. We have a lot of cilantro in here. Yes. Aren't you concerned about how large the cilantro leaves are? They're huge. So Chef Claudio just picks up the sauce and he goes, yeah, this isn't going to work. That's so thick. Look at that. So I should start over then? Uh, the thing is, if you mix this now, it's going to liquefy on you. This sauce is either going to make or break our poutine. I don't have any time to waste. So I brush my sauce, and I start all over again. He's the judge. That yogurt sauce has got to be something special. I know. We need to show the judges we were able to get all the elements as close to perfection as possible. Anything less than the best could set us home. Lynn, how's the sauce going? It's uh, mango yogurt. Well, it looks nice. Mmm. We got very nice flavor mm -hmm. of the coriander. I can taste that. The acidity, the mango, it's quite nice. I think it's going to be a nice match. Thank you. Good luck. Can I give you a hug? No, you can always give it away. You guys can do it too, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. I was just loving the love. <laughs> got a lot of steak to chop, but that's what these kids want. This challenge is about selling as much poutine as you possibly can to hungry, starved university kids. So I need to rev up the crowd, and I need to do my very best to charm as many beautiful ladies over to have our steak poutine. OK, there's only one line. That line is going to be blue team. I could sell snow to an igloo dweller. It is uh, a talent I have. Do you guys like steak? Let me show this kid how it's done. I only have to say one word. Fake it! I am the biggest hustler when it comes to this. I know Michael is a smooth talker and Cody is all looks. Hooray for the underdog! I need to distract from them and Cody's good looks and charm. Do you want your food to taste good or do you want it to look good? Oh! Ho, ho. That's good? Oh, that's good. You got all the flavor you need in that. 30 seconds! Dump her in. It's 30 seconds! We got to have a crowd coming for Putin! OK, ladies, everybody, bring the heat. We need more gravy. This is not going to be enough. This one's ready. Students of Guelph, choose your poutine. Come and get it! Oh, oh Lord have mercy. We need fries, people. Here we go. The students of Guelph University will now choose between the red team's Japanese-inspired poutine with bacon, nori, and miso gravy the blue team's Philly cheesesteak poutine topped with deep fried jalapenos, and the green team's butter chicken poutine with fresh cilantro yogurt and mango slaw. The team that sells the most orders will win this challenge. So check this out. This is the big, dirty steak poutine. Who's getting the first one? Ladies first? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. The forks are right here and the napkins are right here. How do you like it? That's delicious. Yeah, man. We got bacon, baby. Bacon sells. Everyone loves bacon. Yeah, I love butter chicken. It reminds me of India. Hope you enjoy. It's worth the wait over here. This is the best gravy I've ever tasted in my life. I see the red and blue team's lines, and they're endless. I look over to the green line, and there's like 15 people in there. It's like a two-man race. You got nobody. <laughs> oh, no. Good pick on team captain for Lynn. <laughs> I can overhear the other teams talking that our lineup is very short. What they don't realize is we've already fed them and those people are coming back for more. Yeah, yeah. by the time that I got my second one from the green team, they got she their said, first. I was still alive. Yeah. Wow, it's a very short line. Is this your second plate? Yeah, it's delicious, it's incredible. The green team has sold so many orders that they've run out of chicken. Is this all you have left? Yes, we're selling out, Chef. Wow. We're running out of butter chicken, but Tammy decides to make another batch, and she does it in world record speed. Like, I've never seen anybody go boom, 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 and make a butter chicken that fast in the kitchen. There we go.
time he saves the day. With lengthy lines at both the red and blue team stands, the judges wow. go in to find out what's taking them so long. Quasi, are you moving as fast as possible? Or is this chill out mode? No, no chill mode. Okay, you gotta hustle. We have a huge line, Quasi's on the fries. Get it together, buddy. I'm pressing these potatoes, and I'm going as fast as I can. Now it's about speed, eh? Getting it out fast, fast, fast. John, you may have to top that beep as well. Just keep up the speed, huh? Yeah, yeah. So we need four more. We're getting slammed. There's hundreds of students waiting for poutine, and this is taking a long time to make because of all the components on it. So I see that you've gone for the butter chicken. Yeah. You're liking it? I love it. It has really nice flavor. You taste all the different flavors all mixed into one. Did you taste any others? I tried the steak one. From the blue team? Yes. And how did that fare? It was just like an ordinary poutine with steak. Yeah, I could just make it at home. I didn't think it was really anything special at all. I see that you have got the, the red team, yeah. the bacon. I'm a fan. I love Japanese food, so it mixed into the poutine is like win-win for me. Now I'm having the red team. Uh, one thing I found, there's no bacon. You didn't get any bacon? No. That is not acceptable. Who didn't get the bacon in the poutine? You didn't get the bacon. We all didn't get bacon. You all didn't get, you all come with me. I'll check through them, I'll check. Hang on guys, hang on. Dave, they've got one, two, three, four poutines here that do not have bacon. Michael, you gotta do more than just standing, taking the That's cash. The no, you can be a supervisor on this. Michael's first priority is to sell bacon to the students. Have you run out? We have not run out of bacon. Are you sure? We have plenty. If Michael doesn't follow that direction, we are not winning this thing we may be in the pressure test. You have two minutes left. How are we looking over there, boys and girls? Running low on gravy. It's going to be our last couple ones. There you go, my dear. Thank you. Enjoy, my pleasure. Come on, you guys. Let's do this. Come on, brother. <laughs> we got him. We got him. Oh. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Feeling good. We've got this thing in the bag. I have to redeem myself from losing the last challenge, so this would mean the world to me. To announce that winning team, please welcome the University of Guelph cheerleading squad, the Griffins. We won! Yes! The green team wins. I don't understand what's going on. Is that the right color? First of all, you have to cook on the top deck of the ship as it cruises Toronto's spectacular harbor. This is definitely going to be the first time to cook on a boat. But the second and most important aspect of your challenge is that you'll be making canapes, appetizers, and entrees for a lovely young couple named Kim and Erwan, and the large group of friends and family that they've invited to their harbor cruise wedding. Oh, man. <laughs> a meal at a wedding is not something that you can just screw up and, and take lightly. This is a monumental moment in Kim and Erwan's life. The stakes are so high when it's somebody's wedding. I should know, I've got two under my belt. It needs to be perfect in every way, but the pressure doesn't end there. Erwan's family has flown all the way from Paris, and you're gonna be cooking for a wedding party of French foodies. <laughs> These French foodies are really gonna know their stuff. I love French food, I know French food, and I will rock that. Teams will have only 30 minutes to create canapes that will be served after the ceremony. Can you mix olive oil and chop some chives? Yes, sir. Canapé is an olive oil and herb crostini with a wild mushroom ragu, parmesan, arugula, balsamic production. Lynn, how's your sauce? Coming along perfect. I have an all-star cast here. Like, there's no, I don't know what Michael was thinking, but like, I can't believe he gave up these players. Michael made a big mistake. Chris, how you looking? Come on in. Christopher is completely in charge of canapés. Walnut blue cheese cream puff. Things are really organized right now. I'm loving my team. Everyone knows exactly what they're doing, and that's what matters. Oh. It's 15 minutes to the canapes are served. Got it. 15 minutes left, let's do this. This puff pastry, I'm trying to get it caramelized as much as possible. I should just crank this up to max. My puff pastry comes out, and it's pale, but we have no time to fix it. How are they? They're good, they're good. 
Okay, I'm gonna cut you stuff. In five minutes, they need to be done. In the next 10 minutes, they all have to be done. Get faster. Come on, guys. Michael. Hello, chefs. How are you? Very good. We're here oh. to taste the canapes before they go out. This is a blue cheese, walnut, creme fraiche, cream puff filling with a nice caramelized glaze on top. Tastes like very, very nice. Very nice. You concerned about this? It's the best thing to eat. Christopher, don't fill them up too much. That's right. A little less generous on the cheese. It has to be elegant and easy to eat. You have to listen to the judge's advice in this competition. The canapé has to be the wow moment. It's got to be beautiful. It's got to be a piece of art. Chefs, that's what we have. So we have the uh, toasted baguettes. Uh, you have a mushroom ragu, a toasted pine nut puree on there as well, finished off with some H. balsamic vinegar. Great. Thank you. Carry on, guys. Yes. There's no possibility we can lose at this point. We're just, we just can feel it. Time's up! Get those canopies out the door! The service is over here. The most important thing in this challenge is that every single plate leaves this kitchen on time. While the red team's canapes are being served, the blue team is still fussing with their plating. I'm unwilling to sacrifice the complexity of my menu for the ease of getting it out. John, yeah. can you pull off what you're doing and help us? Come on, everyone. The wedding guests are drinking champagne, and they need those canopies. Move, move, move. We're done here. That's service. We're done. We're done. We're done. Okay, done. The guests now get to choose which canapé they like better. The red team's savory cream puffs with walnut and blue cheese filling, or the blue team's crostini with wild mushroom ragu and creme fraiche. I really like the uh, red. It's sweet and savory. I like the... The two different tasties in my mouth, it's uh, very nice. My favorite with the blue team's mushroom canapé. The red team has a hair on it. Okay. Yeah, a little bit disappointed. Michael, yes, Michael, chef. Michael. Yes, come chef. here, come here, come here. One of the guests found a hair in one of your canopies. Oh my god. It was the bride. Oh my god. The bride. Isn't that a nice wedding gift? A hair. Get it together. Below deck, the wedding guests have been seated and the teams have 15 minutes to plate their fig appetizers. Guys, we have to make up for lost time in that last service. Can somebody please grate the cucumber and make sure they're yes, watered down, please? Yes. Lynn has instilled trust in me that she is going to bang out a beautiful appetizer. Guys, this is now the Lynn show, so whatever Lynn says goes, okay? My appetizer is cucumbers and figs and foie gras. Do you need sugar on these, Lynn? How heavy, how heavy on the sugar, Lynn? Sprinkle like you would salt. What do you want for flavor, Lynn? Uh, nothing too strong. There are five cooks in the kitchen, and only one of them knows what's happening with this appetizer. And it's not the leader. You want these in the oven? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put them all in at the same time, okay, though. Okay, here. I'm end of line on this next batch. We cannot have another hair in this, guys. The appetizer is the fig flour. They're fancy, they're easy, and they're delicious. Great job with the fake, Sabrina. Christopher. Yeah? You're overcrowding your pan, and you're gonna have a soupy mess. Things are all water. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Everything's looking good. Let's start plating right now. All right, gentlemen. Chef? It looks very small. We need to dress this with some greens. We need to dress this. Okay, can you do one that is finished so we see it exactly the way the guests are going to get yes. it? Oh, look, look, okay. So if I put fig, fig, and fig there on arugula. Andrew, take charge. Yes, take okay. charge. Okay, guys, more figs, more arugula. Okay, that's it. I just need something to bulk up this plate. So we decide to add brie and add a small arugula salad. What do you got here? It's a fig wrapped in prosciutto, stuffed with an herb cheese. Garnished with some nice crostinis. And what's the dressing? The dressing is just a simple vinaigrette. That's a nice portion. How does it taste, though? We're waiting for you to see. You mean you haven't tasted it, and you're asking us to taste it. You taste it first. OK. Wow. Whose idea was it to do this dish? Sabrina, is it your idea? Yes, Chef. I think it's a good idea. Chef Claudio is impressed. <laughs> it's amazing. But I think you have a home run. Okay? Thank you, Chef. I'm over the moon. Chris, I need you to be more mindful with the croutons, OK? Listen to Sabrina. This is her dish. She earns the respect. You have one minute till you get those appetizers out. One minute. The servers are here, so move it. We have no production line, no organization. It's like we are surprised that we had to serve the food. 
That's way too much arugula back there. Yeah. Cody, you're supposed to be plating. Come on, yep. let's get organized here. Jesus. And all of a sudden, he doesn't want to be the plater because he doesn't know how to put it on the plate. Keep the figs tight to the filo, OK? You hear me? Andrew, you're falling behind. No, we're not. The we're red team let's is go. rushing it out. Yeah, perfect. This looks good, this looks good, and this looks good as well. If there was no flag, get on those plates. Where's the arugula? Where's the, where's the salad? We should be almost there, guys. team or the red team stood out in terms of quality, creativity, and flavor? The red team, because it was easy to try all the ingredients of the plate, and the temperature was very important for me to appreciate the, the fig. Was the fig still warm? The fig was still warm. I appreciated maybe a little bit more the contrast of the blue team, the fluffy texture mixed with the, the cool fig, the warm sauces. I, I, did, I did like blue. A little bit of division happening here. Well, congratulations again. Now that the appetizers have been served, the blue and red teams will start their duck entrees. This is the most important thing happening right now because this is the entree. You don't screw with the entree. Guys, we haven't, we haven't gone down yet. We can have a chance to recover here, okay? And let's have this service perfect. Now the red team is doing duck breasts with some potatoes, which looks like they're cooked in duck fat, and they're putting a kumquat puree. The blue team, they have got some wilted watercress and leek that they've Season up with a little butter, salt and pepper as a base. They've got carrots that they've roasted off nicely in some duck fat. Salt and pepper both sides? I haven't peppered, and I've only I'll got one the side. Right now. Yeah. The wind is blowing in the wrong directions, and I've got pepper flying into my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. She finished all the ducks and then had to go get the pepper out of her eye. And I'm really proud to have her on my team. You're doing great, Jennifer. Thank you. Everyone's doing amazing. John, what are you up to? Scoring these breasts still. 40 prepped. The main event is the duck, and I'm going to make sure it's perfect. If we get this main right, I think we still got it. Where's the plate? That's beautiful. Wow. Oh, wow. It looks very nice, nicely presented. Just make sure you render that fat down a lot more on the duck. See all that raw fat? I'm really worried right now. I didn't sear those duck breasts off properly. I've really compromised our win here. What do you have here, the potato? This is potato and peas that are both cooked in the duck fat. Overall, it's a good dish. I just wish the fat was cooked up. That looks phenomenal, OK? We need that sauce. If we don't rally to put this main course out, we're going to lose this challenge. And one of us is going home. Sauce. 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 It's coming. Coming can't be the answer. We have the chef tasting right now. I'm going as quick as I can, and Cody's in the back. Where's my sauce? Where's my sauce? The sauce is the only component we're missing. Two seconds. I'm two okay. seconds away. All right, you guys, we're here to try the dish. Okay. Are we doing with the sauce, Lynn? I'm going to give you some. Come on, we already tasted that dish. What's wrong? Come on. Look at it. This looks, this looks nice, though, guys. Yeah. Thank you, chef. Thank you, chef. The sauce is still thickening. It's still yes. thickening. I can't make a reduction in 10 minutes. I'm sorry. That's the best I could do. This is not OK. Well, you wanted it. It's not, a, it's not ready yet. Andrew, uh, whose idea was to make that sauce? It was my idea. The sauce is a disaster. It will not be ready until Kim and Erwan are on a plane to their honeymoon. You know what? You know what? No sauce. I got molasses is all in this bottle. It's all in this bottle. We're, we're here. Hey, Done. We don't have a sauce. The only thing that I can think of is to put this pomegranate molasses on the plate and hope that it tastes good for the duck. OK, well, this is a nice recovery. That looks a lot nicer. And who cooked the duck? John and David did. That duck looks perfect. Nicely cooked duck. Wow. Woo! We need a wing, guys, and this looks beautiful. I got to tell you, Andrew. Yes, chef. It's a very nice dish. Thank you, chef. We can still pull it off. We're good. Here comes the server. Come on, come on. You guys, let's get this duck moving. How do you want it? Please tell me. You see? Half circle. OK, Think half circle. Do not let them take them if they have no pomegranates. Red team has a really interesting 
so sick. The red team's foie gras, that's beautiful. Velvety, gorgeous. So the blue team cooks really well the duck with the spinach and the carrots. It just goes perfectly with me. I love this little layer, how they seared it, and they it's beautifully presented. Blue team, delicious. Yeah, hug it up, guys. Now it's time to find out which team weathered the storm and which team got lost at sea. We have asked the newlyweds to announce the winner by cutting into this wedding cake. Will you please do the honors? Will you cut? Sure. I messed up the entrees. I'm really worried right now. Hide it, I don't want to look. I can't even look at that cake. Seems like it's going in slow motion. Ready? Please be a red cake. We are not going to the pressure test. It's red, it's awesome. Feeling good about myself, I'm feeling good about my team. First team challenge that I've won. I am so excited, I could just burst. My kids are gonna be so proud. This is the site of your toughest challenge yet, the restaurant takeover. The nerves just get cranked up. I can't believe we're gonna be cooking in the canoe kitchen. Canoe is the creme de la creme of the city. This is a dream coming true. I'm gonna show you the preparation and presentation for each appetizer and entree that you're gonna be responsible for. First up is Canoe's signature crab and tuna salad with taro chips, black radish, and pickled strawberries. I've got Dungeness crab, beautiful diced fresh tuna. See how that's nicely cubed? Everyone equal. Watching Chef Michael make his dishes is just like watching magic happening. Everything just falls perfectly on the plates. These are gorgeous Ontario preserved strawberries. It's like Chef Michael is making a piece of art in front of our eyes. I wouldn't even have to eat it and I'd be satisfied paying for it. I want everyone looking like that when it comes out. You got it? Yes, yes Chef. chef. The second appetizer is a twist on a traditional French onion soup. Here I've got this beautiful, rich game stock and these gorgeous onions from the Holland Marsh, all stewed up, nicely cooked down. This is thunder oak cheese, bone marrow, absolutely beautiful. And there we are, piping hot onion soup. Next up are the two main dishes, PEI potato beef with duck comfy potatoes and collard greens, and seared ivory salmon with squash and beluga lentils. And I want the salmon to be cooked nice and pink on the inside. I'm watching Chef Michael like a hawk. These are extremely complicated dishes. PEI potato beef. This one is medium. It's all about the cooking of the beef. Feel how firm that is? The softer it is to the touch indicates that it's medium rare. See the wonderful glaze, the thickness, the richness of that? Each one of these plates has somewhere between six and nine components. I'm freaking out, man. I hope you all paid close attention to Michael's instructions because in one hour, 60 of Michael's most valued customers will be seated in Canoe's dining room, expecting the exquisite food that this restaurant is known for. During service, I'll be right here expediting. If I don't think a dish is absolutely perfect, I'll be asking you to do it over. Yes, Chef! We have 30 minutes to prep and give Michael's customers your very best. Before service starts, the teams must sear their beef, extract bone marrow for the soup, and skin and portion their salmon. These bone marrow are really bloody, is that okay? You soak them in water to help that blood sort of wash got out, it, okay? Got it, got it. Steaks look great there. Salt and pepper on everything, evenly spread, looking good. Looking very good. Almost done on the marrow. As captain, I want to run a very tight ship. Chef Michael's reputation's on the line. I'm gonna make sure that I do not let him down. Okay, guys, first order in for the blue team. You got two soup, two crab, okay? Two yes, soup, chef. two crab. Yes, yes chef. chef. Okay, red team, two soup, two crab for you. Yes, yes chef. chef! Dave, press two soup, please. Cody's plating, Christopher's plating, anything that's hot, I'm taking care of on the stoves. Oh, uh, soup is beautiful, dude. Those are seasoned to perfection. Okay, thank you. Sabrina, tell me when you're about one minute behind on your on that app. I'll get the bone marrow in then. Appetizers, Lynn and Sabrina are going to be the front of the line, and I'm going to make sure the stuff in the back is all taken care of. We have two, two crabs, two soup. How much time on the marrow, Michael? Bone marrow. Thank you. 
Lynn, you got to slow it down because Sabrina is not keeping up with you on the tuna. You're going to get too far ahead, and I'm going to have soup sitting up here, and it's going to get cold. A little bit of uh, wasabi oil to finish this. Yes. And then I think we're good to go. Two crab up. You season the tuna? Yes. yes, Chef. OK, did you taste it? I did not, Chef. You're going to make sure, because you'd be surprised at how much salt it can handle. Red team, ordering three soup, two crab. Three soup, two crab. Yeah, start. Just I'll start. I'm the only one here in reality who has any solid knowledge about what happens on the line. No, not the soup, because the crab has to be ready before the soup is. You want oil? Yeah. Lynn, you're not helping me, OK? This is a team effort. If I'm saying something, it's not because I'm not Lynn, trusting I you. Can't. Clean it up, please. Sabrina thinks she's boss. She thinks she knows it all. OK, can I get those soup up for these two crabs here, please? Let's get a few of these up. Coming up, Jeff. Cody, that soup, if there's too much oil on top of it, I will not accept that. Our food items are not coming together properly. Okay, help him on the soup. Feeling a bit scared that we're going to fall behind in service. Soup behind you, Cody. More soup behind you. Thank you. Come on, Cody. Don't keep me waiting here. Oh, here we are, Chef. Service. Let's go. French onion soup. I felt it was lukewarm. Let me make it up to you. I'll be right back. Okay. Michael, person who had the soup, thought it was cold. Which table? Table three. Blue team. We need it on the fly. I can't believe a soup comes back. Let's get a brand new soup 911 right now, OK? Better come out piping hot. Canoe doesn't do plates going back to the kitchen. Hi. Hi. Who had red team and who had blue team here? Oh, you all have red team? Yeah, red team. What are your thoughts here? What do you what do you like? What don't you like? I'm only a couple of bites in. As far as the taste is concerned, it is delicious. The presentation is beautiful. Good evening, ladies. How are you? We're good. How are you? Well, I know you're all regulars here. Does it meet your high expectation? Is it the same as the fare you have regularly here at Canoe? The blue team did a great job on the onion soup with the bone marrow. It was delicious. The diners' opinions will be taken into account, but ultimately, the judges will decide the winning team. Here we have the onion soup from the blue team, the one from the red team. So let's taste the blue soup first. Wow. That's got a great depth of flavor, Michael. Good. Let's try the red team soup. I'm getting that little extra salt hit that they put on the bone marrow. The portion size, I have to say, is a big concern. The red team wasn't very generous with the broth, mm -hmm. where the blue team has a lot of broth. We'll see it. Next, our tuna and crab appetizer. This doesn't look complete on the blue team. They have forgotten the Ontario pickled strawberries and the jelly. How could they forget that? You were so specific when you gave them the demo. Absolutely. Every single ingredient you talked about, you talked about how beautiful those strawberries are. That's right. Wow. Well seasoned. Textures are there. The only misstep there for me is the fact that they forgot the strawberry and the strawberry jelly. The red tea seems to be a little more flamboyant. Nice presentation, some height happening. You can see they handpicked the most beautiful herbs. Seasoning, the presentation, they're about equal. But most importantly, they have the strawberry and jelly. And that makes the dish. OK, guys, we're caught up, I think. Blue team. Yes, sir. What happened with those strawberries missing from your plate? What went wrong? It was an oversight, Chef. I was the last size on the plate. That was my fault. I accept responsibility. It will not happen again. This is terrible, and we can't keep going like this. Getting through this service is going to take nerves of steel. Let's calm down, collect ourselves, and do this thing, OK, brother? We got this. We got this. We have to get it and get it right. Blue team. Yes, Chef. Two salmon, two steak. Yes, Chef. Yeah, everything piping hot, eh, guys? Everything nice and hot. There's a lot of pressure. A single mistake can send us out of control. You ready with the salmon? Hold your horses. I'm just putting garnishes here. Don't worry. Ordering red team, one salmon, one steak. Ordering red team, one salmon, one steak. Salmons are going in. Lynn and Sabrina have given me all the proteins and all the sides. Both the salmon and the beef have to be medium rare. And it's not easy to get them both just right at the same time. I need those steaks. Red team, you've got two salmon that I'm waiting on. And make sure you get those steaks up to temperature, OK? Yes, Chef. Now we're going to have to pick up the piece. Cody, yes, that drizzle is really looking messy there. It's got to be long, the full length of the plate, and a narrow band. Yes, Chef. We have to up our game and meet the standard with every plate. That's how we're going to win this. 
Be tighter on that. That's not tight at all, eh? There's too much cram cranberry goes on top. This goes on the side. Lynn has no idea what to do. Okay, this is not good. Sabrina is telling me my plating is not tight enough. I'm not lining things up properly. We're gonna get that sent back, you know that, right? It's putting us behind. Come on, guys, I need these steaks now. Yes, Chef. Okay, pick up here. Yes, chef. That's a better drizzle on there, Cody. Thank you, Chef. You keep it consistent like that for me, and I'll be very happy. While the blue team sends out a steady stream of dishes, the red team's tables are growing impatient. The appetizers came out really fast, and it was delicious, but uh, I feel like maybe the red team has forgotten about us. Ordering red team, one salmon, one steak. Ordering red team, one salmon, one steak. So two salmon, two steak right now. Two salmon, one two steak. Order. Three salmon or two salmon? I didn't hear you. Three salmon. We're getting orders one after the other. It's crazy. Mayhem. Bananas. And it's taking too long. Let's yes, go with it, guys. Start building your salmon now. Everybody's screaming at each other. Nobody's listening. Regroup, everybody, okay? Please regroup. This is not working. I'm feeling overwhelmed right now. Lynn, calm yourself down for I am calm. One more table left. Let's go, guys. Come on, last table. Let's last go. Bunch. These Thank last you. plates are going to be the best plates we serve all night, guys. Come on, let's go. Here I said. Blue team, your last check is out. Woo. Damn, I can't believe that we just did a dinner service at Canoe. And the ship didn't even sink. Red team, listen up. We've got two tables that haven't had their main courses yet. Yes, chef. Four steaks is what I'm waiting for. Yes, chef. And it's taking too long. Yes, chef. Lynn, push your team there. Come on, yes, guys. We're almost done. We can do this. Michael, if you need to get back there, let me know. I'll call the pass for you. OK, you get there. Get a pan on here. I want to get a pan hot. Oil, butter. Let's go. Watch your lentils at the back there, huh? I am so embarrassed that Chef Michael has to come back and bail us out. OK, are the plates ready? Yes, Chef. Watching Chef Michael is making me realize I got a long way to go. Let's get that one cut on the plate. Put it down. Put it down. Add a boy. OK, let's go. Four steaks. Get them up. Red team, your last order is out. You're done. Being in a professional kitchen is more intense than I ever imagined. I have a newfound respect for those $50 dishes I've been ordering. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mine's plated beautifully. It really is. It's really flavorful. Like, it tastes delicious. I ordered the blue team's P.I. potato meat. Was it done to your satisfaction? Surpassed our expectations. Surpassed your expectations? Yeah. Wow. Wait till Michael hear about this. <laughs> How's the red team's beef? Are they cooked to perfection? You're having the blue team's salmon? Yeah, it's actually very unique. I haven't had this taste combination before. It's very good. The customer comment cards will be taken into account, but the judges will decide the winner based on teamwork, plating, and taste. First, ivory salmon. Red team, it seems to be a little tighter together. Uh, not quite as aesthetically pleasing, I feel, as the blue team. I agree with you 100%. Let's try the red team. You know, with this being ivory salmon, it is very delicate and needs to be served nice and pink on the inside. This is overcooked, Michael. Just a little on the oversight, unfortunately. This is such a delicate fish. It is. Mm. Squash is good. Squash is beautiful. Squash is beautiful. Yep. yep. Should we try the blue team? Wow. Wow. They nailed the cook on that. that. That's a better cook. Yes. Yeah. This looks like a professional chef cooked it. The blue team had better presentation than the red team. And the cook on the salmon was on point for the blue team. The salmon on the red team was just a little on the overcooked side. PEI potato beef. And once again, I'm, I'm feeling that the blue team has the slight upper hand in terms of the overall presentation. Blue team looks very elegant. Steak I found nicely seasoned. What do you think, guys? The meat is very rich. I think overall it's a very well-balanced dish. Let's compare that to the red team. Perfect sear. Nice. Nice caramelization, caramelization on the outside yeah. of the meat. Yeah. The inside here is a perfect medium rare. It goes right through. Very nicely seasoned, both on the collards, on the steak, perfectly cooked steak. The red team's plate had a little bit more sauce than the blue team's. The sauce sometimes makes a dish. In this case, you know, the red got it. The team that won the restaurant challenge and is safe from elimination is... the blue team. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Cody, 
What was it that you think gave your team the edge? It was our ability to communicate and adapt to any situation. These two cooks are amazing, and I couldn't have asked for a better team. This is like a dream come true.